number 67, Alex Fans, Atkins. you are looking live at beautiful Berlin Snyder Sports Complex here. Yep. We are... We are going, we have the 5-0 and Berlin Mountaineers versus the 4-1 and Northern Cambria Colts. So it's going to be an absolutely amazing game here today. We have an interconference battle here, which, folks, we've had a, a few games already. The, uh, the Heritage Conference and the Westpac Conference. It's a great kind of comparison of the regular season leading up the playoffs. Uh, you know, what else can we say? I'm here with my uh, D6 Sports Analyst, Jim Hammett. And Jim, uh, welcome for another, what are we in, uh, week six? Yeah, Dan, this is week six, and this is going to be a big game, a big showdown between a District 5 and a District 6 team. Berlin comes in with a 5-0 and record, sitting atop the District 5 standings and trying to keep pace with Northern Bedford, who is also undefeated. Northern Cambria, 4-1, and looking to stay in the race in that tight District 6 single-A race. It's a big game, and, uh, you know, we're going to see two different styles. Berlin loves to run the ball. They have Drew Blodfeldy, and uh, Northern Cambria likes to pass with Jeff Hogan and Adam Politis. So we're going to see two different styles with two very good teams with good records and a lot on the line. It should be a good one here tonight. Absolutely. Talking a little bit about the senior Gladfeldt for Berlin. Has 777 yards coming into the game. Uh, he has 11 rushing touchdowns himself. So, you know, this is a formidable offense. We saw Berlin in the summer uh, up at Richland Stadium for the 7-on-7. Seven seven. And, you know, we, they, they battled McCord tough. They battled a couple other teams really tough. So, you know, this team can get it done in the air and on the ground. Yeah, a team like Berlin in a 7-on-7, seven seven, they're not the greatest passing team. But they were there to defend the pass, and they did that very well. And you could see the athletes that they had, that they were going to be a special team this season. Obviously, with the 5 and a record, it's showing up early. Uh, Northern Cambria, on their hand, we have not yet to see them play, but we know they knocked off... Penn's Manor week one, and Penn's Manor was our D6 favorite. So obviously you, you know they have the athletes and the skill players to compete. It's just a matter of the battle up front on both sides of this game. Absolutely, Jim. Uh, you know, this Heritage Conference this year is unbelievable. Ligonier Valley already out, in a, out ahead, undefeated. Penn's Manor, which we will be broadcasting next week. But folks, here we go now for the start of the kickoff. Yeah, we're going to have Berlin receiving the ball here. Yeah, Drew Blockfeldy will be deep along with Braden Boxman, the freshman, 5'8", 155 pounds. It's going to go to one of the up end. And he's going to be just shy of the 40-yard line, about the 37-yard line. Still moving. Gets the ball back to about the 38-yard line of the mountain here. And that is where Berlin will start their first drive of the game. Just a minute, or seven seconds in this contest. You'll be looking at Blake Miller, the senior quarterback, six foot, 160 pounds. Uh, does not have the greatest passing stats, but of course when you have a guy like Glod Foley, who we're expecting to see big things from, you know, you don't have to. Berlin will start in a shotgun pistol set, actually. Northern Cambria using a five-man front. And the give is to Lockholy. Makes a few guys miss, and you can tell right away he has a nice little wiggle on his step. Close to first down yardage, we'll call that about eight on that one, Dave. Yeah, Jim, I like it. Like you said, uh, Northern Cambria was in the 5-3, only playing one high safety. Uh, you're going to see a lot of that in smaller conferences, not as much passing as you'll see in the bigger conferences. Lower Highlands and Whitmore, for example. But, uh, you know, even a kid like this trying to defend Glockholy with the 5-3, we saw just getting a pitch and able to get outside there. As you see here, Berlin uh, getting the play right, getting on the right side of the line here for the receivers. They're going to stay in that pistol set. And then, you know, we've seen some great running backs already. And, uh, you know, Gladfeldy has a lot to live up to after seeing what Solarchik did last week for Richland. Oh, absolutely, Jim. They're going to stick with him on the ground. He breaks a few tackles up over midfield for the first down. Jim, just what you said about uh, Tanner Solarczyk, you know, Richland was running this type, this type of pistol diamond set. Um, you know, it's becoming more and more popular in the Hulk's And we heard of the Northern Cambria front being, you know, having some trouble sometimes controlling the line of scrimmage. Berlin's going to go right at him with their good running game. And, uh, you know, two plays in, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. Absolutely. They're going to stay in that pistol set. Northern Cambria with that five-man look, three linebackers, single coverage to both receivers. It's going to be a pitch out to Glockfeldy. He's met in the backfield. And a fair fumble on the play, but he was rolled down. 
Uh, Guadalupe tried to get to the outside, was not able to. Number Good penetration Chris there Barrett for the Northern Cameron Colts. Yeah, that was number 60, Chris Barrett, that, the junior 6 foot 270 pounder. So again, Berlin, kind of in a hurry up, no huddle look, trying to control the tempo of this game and make Northern Cambria work after that long bus ride the whole way from Northern Cambria to the other end of 219 here in Berlin. And we have a fumble on the exchange. That's Guadalupe again, not able to get out of his backfield. That's two straight plays for Northern Cambria to get tackles for losses. Big. Big step for Northern Cambria to be able to stop him early and maybe, you know, give Berlin some different looks and different ideas. So it looks like they're going to go with the no huddle a little bit here. Really, folks, in your first drive, you want to use a bunch of different formations to see how the defense is going to adjust, and that's exactly what Berlin's doing now. See, Northern Cambria's having to move the nickel linebacker out to cover the pass. We have trips down to the bottom half of your screen. Some communication issues on the Northern Cambria defense with the lone man up top. So we're going to have a timeout here, 9.28 in the first quarter remaining. And we have a third down and three situation here for Berlin on their first drive. Again, when I remind you by a quick balloon from the cheerleaders. Down by the youth football trailer, also supporting youth football by getting some Mountaineer gear from them, and supporting some Mountaineer youth football. But buy a, dollar, buy a balloon for a dollar. So Dan, early on in this game, what have you seen from the Northern Cambria defense to be able to get into that backfield and stop Rockville? Like well, you said, uh, you know, they, sometimes they're getting pushed around on defense, especially in the defensive line, but they're definitely able to get penetration. Now what Berlin has been able to do so far is get outside a little bit, able to get away from those big defensive linemen. But Jim, also, you know, what it really comes down to is Berlin not executing, though, on a few handoffs there already. Absolutely, but you saw those first two plays went so well for them. So, you know, it's it's hit or miss right now early on. Uh, Berlin's going to go five wide. It'll kind of a look from that passing league when we saw him at, back in uh, August in Richland. See how Northern Cambria comes out and defends it. And it's going to be a reverse. And they got their man in space. Ooh, trips on a blade of grass. He had a lot of steam. Only for a few yards there. It's going to bring up a fourth down for Berlin. 67 out of the 45 there. Big slow. Coach Paul is going to call on the punt team here, and it's going to be fourth down and eight. So Northern Cambria able to stop Berlin on their first drive here. Number ten, Derek Bear. Number sixteen, Nolan Bronick. Freshman. Bear back to the team. The punt of twenty-four, Luke Sprouse. Luke Sprouse on the punt. Lone man deep for Northern Cambria is number ten. That is Derek Bearer. High kick, but it goes straight out of bounds. That's not going to net for very many yards. We'll see where the ref walks out of bounds. And the punt goes out around the 32 yard line. Over the go from there. It's going to be at about the 33 yard line, we're going to call it. And that's where Northern Carrier will start their first drive. Now you see Northern Cambria opening up their offense. They're in the white jerseys with the black pants, black helmet. They're going to start in an I formation or a single back set, full back lone man behind, man in motion to his right. Hand off right away for about a yard, maybe two. Northern Cambria. Yes, so the run as opposed to the pass, which we were expecting. And Jim, you know, you see a lot with Northern Cambria, their offense using a lot of single back sets. Big Jeff Hogan, obviously, there at quarterback, but they're going to use some motion and they're going to use four wides at times, too, as well. So, definitely giving Berlin different looks here. Yeah, you saw last year Northern Cambria had a tough season, about five and five, five and six. But then, you know, you look at single A sports, they won the District Six basketball championship. So, you know, there's athletes in the school and they've rebounded nicely to this four and one start right away. They give it to number 20. He's able to find some yards up to, up to about the 40 yard line. That is so hard. 
We finally got confirmation. We've been trying to say his name at the, on the podcast a few weeks. It is Sukar, and he got a nice little run there. That's a third down and three for Northern Cambria on their first drive. We have 7.37 remaining here in the first quarter. No score. Berlin was forced to punt on their first drive. Northern Cambria moving the ball nicely on the run of the first two plays. Let's see if they can pick up a big first down to keep this drive alive. You have Adam Politis here at the bottom half of your screen. He is the dangerous wide receiver for the Colts. Single coverage. They're looking at a slant for him. He picks it up and fights for some yards. Up to about the 47 yard line, and that's a first down. Jim, that really, Hogan, obviously that was a good read there by Hogan, but uh, you know his size really comes helpful there. Able to be under center and throw that slam pass with ease. And again, you saw Berlin off the ball a little bit. Politis with that quick slant. Hogan able to recognize early to get him the ball. And Politis, what a tremendous athlete he is. I've seen him play baseball, seen him play basketball. We know what he can do. And he showed it right there on that play. Northern Cambria staying with that same base set all, all plays so far. Give straight up the middle. That's about three yards for number 47. That is Nate Sucheski, the 5'10", 190-pound senior. That was a nice tackle there by Glock. Uh, the end there for Northern Cambria was trying to come over there and cut him real quick, but uh, Drew able to slide underneath that and able to tackle for this two-yard game. So about a second down and eight here for Northern Cambria. Man in motion, that's number 20. Hogan gives to Zacheski. And not much happening there. He's looking to get back to the line of scrimmage on that play. Yeah, the uh, Berlin defensive line, definitely a little bit undersized here, I'll say. But you know, they're shooting gaps, so that's what they're doing. They're blitzing with their middle linebacker here and there, right up the middle. So they're definitely working on the center and the guards early on. We'll see if Northern Cambria tries to go to that single coverage with Politis again. They're playing off the ball. You know, maybe one of those quick outs to him and see if he can make a man miss and maybe run for some big yards. They have safety help shading towards Politis. That's Miller. Lone single coverage on this side. They have another give up the middle, only about a yard, maybe two. It's going to be a fourth down. And right around midfield, you're expecting another carry to punt. Well, Jim, just like you said, uh, you know, they're getting that safety help over top of Lynn using two safeties. You definitely need to use two safeties whenever you're using four wide receivers as Northern Cambry is using, using having, having two tight ends or well, wings, you could call them off the line of scrimmage. And you have the two dangerous players for Berlin back to receive. That's Glofeldy and that's Miller, the quarterback. You know, we see in the single-A football, you've seen the quarterback being one of the best athletes, sometimes being forced into special teams play. It's going to be a nice kick there for Northern Cambry. It's going to take a good bounce. Fielded by Miller. He's not going to go anywhere. Good special teams play there for Northern Cambria. And it's going to set Berlin back deep on their second possession here. 4.45 left in the first quarter. We still have no score. And the drive will start from the 10-yard line. Folks, this section of the of our broadcast is brought to you by the Haven Lounge in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Located on Langhorne Avenue, stop in and have one of the world's largest Rubens and a fine selection of draft beer. And the drive will start 4.45 on the clock here. They're going to stick with that pistol set here. Miller. He'll get the call. An option pitch. Kind of a dangerous pitch, but he's get, able to get about six yards on that play. That's number three. That's Braden Footman. I'm not, I'm not sure really what Sukar was doing there. He saw the pitch. He was playing on the left linebacker position, but he really didn't come up to... Uh, really attack the running back. He the, Obviously the running back was able to get six yards. I'm really not sure what Sukar was doing on that. Yeah, but that's a uh, senior quarterback running the option, being smart and knowing when to pitch the ball and when the defender is about to grab him. Good play by Miller. Nice run by Sukar. Bookman. And again, another option. He's able to bait the defense to go to the running back. He keeps it himself, picks up the first down. Picks up the down here first down. Number 10, Derek Bear. And 
Northern here. Cambria is sticking with that five man front. I like the pistol set that Berlin's able to use here. It kind of makes Northern Cambria make a decision early in the play. And they're sticking with that option. Miller's going to keep it. He's going to be stuffed just at about the 25 yard line for a gain of one. It'll bring up a second down and nine with the clock rolling here in the first quarter. 3.38 on the clock. Second and nine. Second down and nine here, Miller gets the call. He's going to be back to pass. Looking for block He ooh, puts on a great move. Able to get up to the three-yard line. Berlin has their mismatch. Uh, yeah. Obviously, especially with Blocky out there, they have single coverage with one high safety. So they're able to get the single coverage to their most dangerous player. He puts on a terrific move, one of the best we've seen all year. Able to get to the sideline, gets the first down, and Berlin, just like that, out of out of the shadow of their own end zone and closing closer to midfield here. Miller gets the call. Looks like a design run. Not much happened there. Good defense by Northern Cambria, able to penetrate the line early, and Miller had nowhere to go. Lost on the play. I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if that was a busted play there. We saw the wide receiver coming in. Little extended motion there at the end, but uh, obviously Blake Miller just trying to get it back to the line of scrimmage to salvage that play. Miller back to pass. Oh, his receiver falls down. Lobs it up to Black Cody. It's going to be out of bounds. Like Miller throws it away. As you saw early on that rack, Block Cody falls down. He's trying to make a play at the end. Miller and him were not on the same page. It's going to bring up a third down, and uh, you're going to have to expect Berlin to pass here again. Third and well, Obviously, you do, not, you do not want to be getting into these third and long situations when you're a running type team. Absolutely, but Northern Cambria doing a lot better on defense than we expected early on. We, we thought, you know, Berlin would be able to control them physically, but not so early on in this contest. See, bottom half of your screen, that is Glockfeldy. The single coverage. That's the first down, and he has got room to run. He's stumbling down inside the 30 to the 25 yard That was a great move there again by Berlin. Using the sidelines to their advantage, it looked like Northern Cameron thought he was going to be stepping out. It looked like the ref thought that as well, but ref saw it, let the play go on. Good play by Sprouse, the junior, the 6-1 tight end. Made, made a few guys miss, was able to toe the sideline and get the big gain for Berlin. And the first real big play of the contest. We're going to have an option. It looked like Glock thought he was coming Lee in for the first. Sniffed out by that Northern Cambria defense, and that's another loss. You know, if Miller got that off, he was definitely open there. We had this whole wide side of the field. Second and 13, lost the three. Folks, it's obviously West Pack Heritage Showdown. Definitely some good teams coming. You can see these teams in the 5A and the 6A playoffs here. Absolutely, two playoff caliber teams for certain. Miller gets the call, going to run the option one more time. He's going to keep the ball. Actually, rather, that was Blockfeldy running back in a shotgun uh, wildcat look, if you will. Able to punish, it, punish a tackler and move forward for a few yards. Good run there by Blockfeldy. So far from Northern Cambria, we see on the option play, the defensive ends are going for the running back, and that's forcing the linebackers to have to fill on the quarterback. And these quarterbacks are definitely quick with Blockfeldy and Miller running the option. And another loss on the play. Northern Cambria coming up with it's tons of tackles for the loss. Looks like we're going to have a timeout here. And Coach Paul is definitely not out here. Absolutely just stormed onto the field here with 114 left in the, in the first quarter. If you're the Northern, the Northern Cambria right coaching staff, sure you've given up some big plays, but able to get about five tackles for loss early on this game. Shows that they're ready to compete on the, on the trenches with Berlin. Yeah, Jim, it definitely does. This is a formidable team. You know, this is a single-A team, but they're definitely a big squad. 
uh, the skill positions are really talented. I'm not sure, so sure about the uh, defensive backs so far in the game, but uh, it's been interesting to see so far. You can see Coach Paul there in his huddle, really not happy with his two broken plays here in this drive. But you got to credit Northern Cambridge for making the plays. We have a minute 14 left to go in the first quarter. Still no score. It's going to be a fourth down for Berlin. And, uh, you know, it's not really a kicking situation, not really a punting situation. Uh, we're going to see what the offense does here. A big play early in this contest already. I thought he's going to run it. No, he's going to try to pass. Huge hit there. By number 67 for Northern Cambria. Absolutely, and it stops the drive, gets them the ball back on offense. And, uh, you know, after the big play by that tight end, number 24, Luke Spills, the offense was stagnant after that. Northern Cambria came up and, uh, with their backs against the ball, made the plays. You know, that hit by 67, like we said, Alex Atkins. The big senior, 6'2", 235. Like we said, these are, these are playing a linebacker. These are some big boys here. We'll see if Northern Cambria maybe tries to take a chance here on first down. They have four wide, only one man in the backfield. We'll see if they can... They were trying to catch Berlin sleeping. They did a run, maybe a yard. Zacheski on the carry. It's going to pick up the second down and nine. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Pick up a yard, second and nine. So I'm surprised we're not getting more looks here with the, the Hogan Politis type of connection. Not even running anything really downfield, more slam patterns that we've seen so far. So it's going to break up a second down to nine. 34 seconds left to go here on the game clock. Again, Northern Cambria with that four wide look. They have linebacker slot coverage here on both sides of the ball. He's going to throw deep across the middle. Had his man. Overthrew him slightly. Looked like there was a little botch coverage there again by Berlin. Uh, they had two that you saw the converging on the post, both uh, receivers on the inside. Hogan had them both, but wasn't able to hit either of them. If he's able to hit one of them, they were running for a long way with only one man covering each of them. One block, one move, and he could have been going to the house. Absolutely, Jim. You know, like you've like been saying, Berlin, we're running these two high safeties. If you don't, if you have a four wide set and you're not covering your linebacker on one of those safeties, you can be open with a, a downfield seam. I break up a third down and nine here. Northern Cambria really hasn't gotten much going on offense just yet. It's going to be a draw, and they have some room to run. Makes one man miss. Up over the 40 for the first down. Zacheski on the carry. Good running there for him. Senior 5'10", 190 pounds, Zacheski there. He's really a cog, though, in that Northern Cambria offense. Like we said, we, we know what Hogan could give you. But, you know, he's going to give you those type of hard-fought yards on the ground every game. Again, it looks like Northern Cambria is going to be content to take this into the second quarter. We have a nothing, nothing score here. It'll be a first down and 10 from the 40-yard line. And walked around the first quarter, and his game is every single thought was going to be a great contest so far. On upcoming 2012 here at the Santa Maria Sports Complex. So Dan, what do you think about Northern Cambria's confidence to run with four wide and only the five linemen, no tight, no fullback, just going straight ahead right after the limb? Yeah, so, you know, from what we've been hearing, they've been doing it the, this whole season. Uh, seems like they're doing it a little bit more so today. You know, I'm not really sure what you can attribute that to if they saw something on the film or whatnot, but uh, it seems to be working. I like how they're doing it. Uh, the passes have been wide open. Sorry, I'm going to go to the 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 Sponsored by Snyder's of Berlin, obviously the best chips in the world. They have the jalapeno chips, and you know, we got free chips up here. It's a great uh, great atmosphere for homecoming here for Berlin. And we have another score, uh, big Westpac game right now, and that is the Portage uh, Blackleaf Valley game, and they have the same score, nothing, nothing after one. First and 10, from their own 40 yard line. 
So we're going to switch sides of the field here. Northern Cambria is going to be coming towards the entrance of the stadium. And a beautiful entrance here at Berlin. Well, it's just a great facility, as Dan was talking about. And the people here have been great to us, been very helpful. And we're going to have the second quarter start right here. It's going to be a run right up the middle. And a Wildcat set. Nothing doing. Tackle for loss. And Berlin gives Northern Cambria a taste of their own medicine. So it's going to bring up a second, second down and 12. 12. And uh, you know, we see in uh, Northern Cambria, they had success out of the four wide look. Went away from it, went with a Wildcat, if you have it, and a two yard loss. So let's see if they go back to that four wide look, which they are. Back to pass is Hogan. He's going to get hit. He's brought down for a sack by Berlin. And there he is again. Number 72, Colin Stokes is on a sack. Uh, Jeff Hogan. Third and 18, Colts. And that's going to put Northern Cambria in a tough situation here. It's going to be third down and 18. Way backed up in their own uh, side of the ball here. And Berlin defense coming up with some two big stops here in the, uh, this uh, first and second down, setting up this big third down here for Northern Cambria. Northern Cambria there with a trip set to, the left, to their left. Looking for Politis. He finds him. It's going to be just short of the first down. Nice play in there. He's down at the 49 yard line. And it looks like it will be just a yard short, but you saw Politis, the ability to go up, get the ball in traffic with no fear, made a good play there. Absolutely, Jim. 6'2", 185 pounds. He has all the business in the world to be going up for those balls. So it's decision uh, time right now for Coach Paul Ferranto. It looks like he's going to go for it. Fourth down and one. One of the biggest plays of the game so far. Ten minutes to go in the first, first half. No score. We're going to have a timeout by the Northern Cambria coaching staff. Jim, like we said earlier, these two, these two teams are both playoff teams. Berlin, District 5A, they're, they're, they're right now in first in their, in, in their uh, district, but Northern Cambria, on the other hand, right now they're laying in here at fifth, right behind Portage and Juniata Valley. So you know, this District 6A playoff race is really going to be something this year. I'm really looking forward to it. Like we said, they brought it down to eight teams only this year. Yeah, there's about 24 teams competing for just eight spots. Uh, you know, you have a lot of conferences with the Westpac, ICC, Heritage, the two Laurel Highlands teams that are going to be in it. So, you know, there's going to be a, a pretty diverse group of teams in the in the field. And, you know, it's if it's cut down to eight from 24, they're going to be eight pretty good teams. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you have your Penns Manor and Bellwood Annis, obviously, they're right there. Uh, you obviously have Bishop McCord, who's actually outside of the top eight rankings right now. We're expecting them to be in, but the big surprise this year has been Bishop Guilfoyle, who we brought back into you live last week when they upset the Penn Cambria Panthers. Yeah, Bishop Guilfoyle is doing a lot of good things this year. The big physical defense, very impressive team. But we have a fourth down and one here in our game. Big play early, right at right midfield. Double tight here for Northern Cambria. Get to the fullback. He plows straight ahead. He's going to tend on the spot here. The ball carrier will see what he spot. Oh, so sure, but that's fun. It looks like he got at least a yard after that, but the refs are going to take a look at it. We are going to have a measurement here. It looked, it appeared as he was able to go through the line, plunge for the first down, but with 9.54 here to go in the first half, we have a nothing nothing score and a big play, or a big spot rather, coming up right here. Really haven't been too many surprises in this match. We knew it was definitely going to be that really type of dog fight. You know, two teams coming out and biting heads, and that's exactly what it's been so far. By, by pretty much the length of the football, Northern Cambria is able to pick up the first down. This is the first down. First and ten. Colts coming out here at forty-nine. So bring up first down and 10 here for Northern Cambria, able to pick up that big fourth down and one. A good call by Coach Toronto early on in this contest. 
and let's see if it pays off for some points. We still have no score, and the clock is running with it about 9.40 left to go in the first half. Timing route, tries to set up for a, a nice little move, but he falls down. It's about a game of one. That was super hard to catch. And, uh, the time Berlin there was in a man-to-man. -man. You know, what I would be doing here if I was Northern Cambria, get uh, Adam Politis there on the inside, get him on that wing or in that tight end position and let him run down the field. He can beat these linebackers who are having to play single coverage on the inside receiver. Yeah, we've seen his athletic athletic ability on two plays. He's being covered by a freshman, a good freshman at that, but still, you like the experience of a senior in a game like this. They're going to go to Politis deep on the sideline. He goes up, makes the play. We saw Blake Miller, the Berlin safety, come over for extra coverage, and he was able to maybe knock the ball away. Politis with showing the jumping ability, going up, trying to get that ball. Good effort there. Good, good toss by Hogan. Didn't look, look like he was happy there. About the about the no call, he looked like he wanted some pass interference. You know, it, it was good coverage if if you ask me. Uh, he actually beat uh, number three, but with Miller coming over to help and the ball being slightly underthrown, that was the result of that play. So bring up another third down here for Northern Cambria. The clock is stopped at 8:56 to go in the first half. We're going to have a sweep out here to Northern Cambria. He has some room to run. He goes down at the 40. Zacheski is now on the 40 yard line. It'll be short of the fourth down. It's going to be another fourth down. Number 12, Blake Miller, the safety makes the stop. Fourth and two. Coach Paul, they're not happy again. Defensive end there was it was getting sucked in a little bit and, and Northern Cambria able to get outside. So big play here again and uh, definitely in that probably go for it situation. They're going to bring in the extra tight ends, the extra big bodies here. Let's look for another run, but maybe a play action to catch up uh, Berlin sleeping. <laughs> Berlin looking like they're coming with the blitz. Power set here. It's going to be a pass. Oh, wait. Oh, the ball. It wasn't the flag. Folks, Hawkman there, number three for uh, Berlin, was all over the receiver. Not sure why the no call. Maybe we were saying simultaneous. The ball was right there, right when the, the contact happened. Yeah, that's how I saw it. And uh, the, the ball was actually poorly thrown by Hogan. It, it, Politis never really had a chance to go get it. So I think he hit the ball as he was sailing over their heads. But it would have been a miraculous catch if Politis came up with that one. I like the play call by Northern Cambria. And you're, you're going to see Blockfelly here in the Wildcat. He pops over the run. Breaks through for eight, 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 Berlin here in the hurry up again. That's tough when you're a single leg team whenever most of your players are playing both ways, but Berlin able to do it so far here today. Yeah, you see like at the upper levels of football, especially college and even uh, you know, some of the good pro quarterbacks, they like running that. Uh... Oh, we have a fumble here. He's able to avoid some tacklers. Number three, Clifton. Braden Froman able to recover the fumble, get back to the close to the line of scrimmage. Still going to be short, bring up a third down, but he saved the disaster from happening there. Yeah, absolutely, got a nice lucky bounce there. He came back right up into his bread basket. So it's a third down and one here for Berlin. We're going to stick with Glotfeldy here at the, the running quarterback, if you will. And he's just going to he's gonna keep the ball himself. Kick the ball himself. Picks up the back here first down. Down to the 48. And we're still waiting for that one big play to happen for maybe a big long scoring strike. Both teams being very methodical down the field, taking their chances when they can. But uh, you almost expect Glotfeldy to break through here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, 7.25 so far. Probably has around 50 rushing yards. Miller on the QB keeper. Breaks a few tackles inside the 40. 
driven out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Good run there by Miller on first down on the QB keeper. And again, Berlin trying to control tempo, keeping the, the huddle out of the game and keeping their guys on the field moving. Seven ten to go here in the first half. No score, but Berlin is driving here with some big runs here by the two seniors, Miller and Glockfeld. A little confusion here by the Berlin uh, play call. Got to be close to the play clock here. They were very close to getting a delay of game. Rather than getting that, they call the timeout to avoid the penalty. We're going to have a first down and 10 coming up here, 7.03 on the clock. And, and the clock is actually running by accident here. So we'll see if they get that fixed out in the press box. We're out here on the roof for the second straight week. And another great night for football here in Western Pennsylvania. Yeah, you know, coming in here, we saw the great Berlin parade that they had down through uh, beautiful Main Street here. This is really a diamond in the rough, this football facility. It's an unbelievable atmosphere, especially for the homecoming. Absolutely, and we got here right at uh, right as the sun was breaking here. We saw you know, the mountains, any which way you looked, it was just a great setting. And the field itself is beautiful. You know, Berlin really has a nice facility and nice setup down here. Look, you can see there that beautiful entrance right behind the uh, the one end zone there. So they got the clock situation fixed. It will be 7.05 remaining here in the second quarter. And we'll have a first down and 10 for Berlin. The play, is, the play dispute is settled between the coaches and players. And the pistol is back in Miller. Pump fakes going deep. He had Glockfeld, he overthrew him, but Glockfeld, he had his man beat. A little touch on that pass, and you're talking about six points for the Mountaineers. Absolutely, Miller just overthrowing it. Glockfeld, he got a great release outside and was able to get past his defender. You saw the pump fake there to maybe bring the defense in. Good job by Miller. But again, I'll bring up a second down to 10. Just shy of seven minutes to go here in the first half. We have no score between the Heritage Northern Cambria 4-1 and the Westpac 5-0 leaders, Berlin. Miller puts a nice move up the middle. Only for about two yards. It's a QB keeper. And uh, the coaching staff obviously has a lot of faith in Miller rolling the ball. Yeah, Jim, like we said, we saw him in seven-on-seven seven passing this year. This is our first time to get a real good look at him, you know, on continuous drive. He's definitely a leader as a senior. So Berlin trying to keep that tempo running. And on third down and nine, Miller back to pass. Looks to block belly. He had him over through him again. He was open for the first down. Fourth down and nine. Got rush throw a little bit. It's going to bring up a fourth down and nine with 6.27 left. And it's decision making time for Coach Paul. I'm expecting to go for it here on fourth down inside Northern Cambria, ter Cambria territory. Yeah, you know, even though uh, Miller's overthrown to the ball, he's, he has good pocket presence. You know, able to escape that a little bit of traffic that's coming into his face and able to get off a throw. Unfortunately, the throws have been high or low, but, uh, you know, we'll see if he can adjust here. Being chased. Brought down by number 55, deep in their own territory. Northern Cambria comes up with a big defensive play. We'll take over at the 46 yard line. And they'll start to drive with 6.20 to go here in the second quarter, maybe trying to take a halftime lead. And that was number 59, Josh Placco, the DN, uh, senior 5'8, 165, wasn't fooled on that play on the weekend on that uh, play. Looked like they were trying to get the out pass there, but uh, Northern Cambria had that covered. Yeah, Berlin was able to, or actually Northern Cambria was able to pick up some good field position here. Let's see if they're going to be able to do something with it. You have Adam Politis here being guarded by the freshman on the bottom half of your screen. You have twins to the top half of your screen. No safety help over the middle on one of one of the sides. It's just going to be keep by the running back number twenty. He finds a room to run. Gets inside. Northern Cambria territory down to the back of the That is Sukar. Picked up about 25. 
Two cars show, showing us what they have so far. Northern Cambry running the two back offense. And Sukar able to find the seam in between the linebackers and runs down the middle of the field. So Northern Cambry here with the first down and 10, under six minutes. The give to the running back. He finds some good yardage. This is going to be close to the first down. That's Nate Zacheski. That's Nate Zacheski. They're going to have a measurement here, but it looked like he was close to the first down. We'll see here after, after the measurement by the officials here. We have 5.49 here to go in the first half. Berlin, or Northern Cambria rather, driving deep in Berlin territory. And it is a full first down. And it is indeed a first down by Northern Cambria. Using the running game here and going right at Berlin, giving them a little taste of their own medicine. We knew Berlin had a great rushing attack. Northern Cambria is showing that they're pretty good too tonight. So 5.42, no score remains, still on the clock. First and 10 for Northern Cambria at the 30-yard line. It's going to be a keep. And he's going to get it into the end zone on the dive. That's number 20. Sukar in the end zone. Sukar, a 170-pound junior, able to avoid a few men and found some, uh, pay, and was able to get to pay dirt on that play. Puts Northern Cambria up 6-0 with 527 remaining here in the first half. And the homecoming crowd at Berlin is stunned. And Jim, you know that the cardinal sin of playing defensive end is biting on that fake in the in, air inside on the uh, on the offense and then obviously Sukar there able to go around the end into the end zone for a touchdown. And it's up and good. And with 527 left in the first half, the Colts are on the board first with seven. And we have a score to pass along to you from the Laurel Highlands up in Somerset. We have Richland up 27-0 after one quarter of play in Somerset. Big score there. That was gonna be our play or game of the week. I'm glad we're here. Yeah, that's uh Wow, Jim, we've had six good calls already this this year. But uh, yeah, you know that we were talking about that game on the podcast, and uh, really, Richland is a team that once their playmakers are together, we we know what they can put up. You know, flick back in the lineup. Really, it's unstoppable. And especially after that last week uh, with with Somerset playing Johnstown, it didn't look so sharp. But uh, obviously, down there in Somerset is a spoiler. Alert. It's a, a spoiler type game for the Richland Raiders. Yeah, maybe Rush are trying to take out some punctuation. Not able to score the points they're used to against the good and team. You know, they finally got the offense for the night. We'll see what the final turns up, but it looks like Richland's well on their way to uh, six and a start here. And fans, stay tuned tomorrow if you want, if you guys want to catch that game. We'll have that full game film on our site tomorrow morning. Senior soccer recognition. So be here Thursday night for the Snyder Bowling Sports Complex. Another quick update: We'll also have the Blacklist Valley Portage game. Which is going on right now. And it's that, that score is 0 0 right now, but you, as well, you'll be able to watch that game tomorrow. And don't forget about our live broadcast tomorrow. We'll have the Bishop McCourt Westmont rivalry. Westmont with their home games played on Saturday. It will bring you two games this week. That's number three. Slips up at about the 20. Makes a few guys miss, but he's brought down. Good special play cool. again by Brock Cameron. 18 yard line. 5.20 to go in the first half. First and 10, not near to the 7-0. And Berlin trying to get on the board here before halftime. Northern Cambria shifting their defensive ends there. Again, they're sticking with that. Yeah, I like that five-man friend kind of giving Berlin some trouble. Miller pitches the block call. He has some room to run. 
see if he can find it. Reverse the steal. And that's kind of a play for Johnny Sheezy's paper. Like, able to make guys miss in traffic. That's a special thing running backs can do. And that's where the good ones separate themselves from the great ones right there. Yeah, no doubt, Jim. You know, we were talking about this in our podcast. The comparisons between Gladfelty and uh, Sheezy, and they're a lot they're a lot similar. You know, when they run between the tackles, able to make guys miss. Absolutely. The balance and the, the agility between the tackles is the, really the thing that sticks out for both of these guys. Very impressed with Gladfelty early on. And they're going to give it to him again on an option pitch. Makes one guy miss. Gets up over the 35. Well, on the pitch. That's going to be a five-yard run. The they have a second down and five for the Lynn Brothers Valley. Northern Kennedy has since changed their sort of uh, defensive strategy covering the option. Now the defensive end's taking the quarterback and the linebacker's taking the running back. So second down to five, 422 left to go here in the first half clock. Berlin is looking to get a score on the board here. Northern Cambria hoping to come up with another big defensive stop. They played the option well there. And Miller had nowhere to go. That's going to be a third down here with about four minutes left. No huddle still for the Mountaineers. No game. Third and five, Mountaineers. We're under four minutes left in the first half. So third down and five here, big play coming up. And in motion, Miller's going to keep the ball. Going to be just short of the first down. Well, Blake Miller on the quarterback keeper. Out around the 40-yard line. 79 in Ludwig. Here's a fourth and one. Here. The fourth and one. Yeah, decision making time. It looks like Coach Paul's going to keep him on the field. Maybe try to draw an offsides on a hard count, something of that nature. But uh, big risk if you don't get the first down on this uh, short situation. And they're going to think better of it, call it time out and talk Mount about here. it first. Jim, something I noticed, you know, just watching the Berlin sidelines, side obviously, yes, they're running this no huddle. And, you know, Coach Paul is obviously it has to be very verbal with the signals. Uh, sending in, but you know this whole entire Berlin coaching staff is, is coaching from the sideline. They're really coaching their players up in between every play. We have another score to pass. Tyrone is leading Bald Eagle 27 to six in the second quarter. Well, Jim, it looks like uh, I'm glad I, I, I didn't pick Bald Eagle this week uh, in my top five rankings. Obviously, they came out of years, too, I think. Uh, this Absolutely. Is I stuck Tyrone back in there. I had a feeling that, you know, a few weeks with the new quarterback, new coaching staff, it would take, take a while, and they're finally starting to click, and they're not going to be a team you're going to want to play in the playoffs. Absolutely. It, it, you know, it is amazing. We saw that week one. Obviously, the Bellwood lost, and then they got shut out against Central. But, you know, a, a, a team... With the tradition such as Tyrone, he's going to come back no matter what. Especially, you know, they stayed in-house after Franco left. I think that really helped them, too. Absolutely. It gives uh, the players a good sense of who the coaches are, what to expect. But uh, we have a fourth down and one, and Berlin is in punt formation here. 3-10 to go. going to take a Berlin bounce here on the punt. They're going to down it at about the 14 yard line of Northern Cambria. So with exactly three minutes to go here in the first half, Northern Cambria will get the ball back with a 7 nothing lead. So Northern Cambria gets the ball back. With a seven nothing lead, looking to add on. And, you know, they can hurry up, try to get the ball to Politis, get the ball in his hands, see what happens here. Maybe go up two scores, which would be big in a game with such a low scoring count. Absolutely, Jimmy. You, know, you you don't really necessarily have to run a no huddle right here, but you definitely have to have a hurry up type of offense going. And we'll definitely First see game. what they have in store for us now. And the thing with Northern Cambria you see here is they really send their wide receivers out wide. Kind of spreads the field, lets the runners run. And you saw right there, they got a nice little run, maybe six yards on first down.
24 with the crowd. I like how they're spread out wide as well. You know, that forces the safeties to have to play outside of the hash marks, especially, you know, especially when you have to cover the wide side of the field. So Not sure why Northern's uh, going from the huddle with only 2.30 left. Sorry, Jim. That's all right, Dan. And the foul up the middle here, and it's not going to be good for a first down. It's going to bring up a third down the line. And maybe Rulin can start thinking maybe timeout, trying to get the ball back. Yeah, that's what I would be thinking, especially if you know, know, they're going from the huddle again here, folks. And there's only 2.12 left. And making a substitution is definitely not what you want to be doing if it's a, if, you know, under three minutes to go. Absolutely. Third down and two. Two-minute mark has just hit, and they don't seem to be in any hurry. So if, if I'm Berlin, you get to stop here, call a timeout, maybe set yourself up for a nice little drive at the end of the half. Oh, the Camry obviously wants to convert. It's just going to be a direct, direct run for the running back. Looks like he's right on the mark. And there is a flag on the play. It's a hold on Northern Cambria. That's the first flag of the whole game, folks. You know, it's a long time to go without making any uh, any visible mistakes, I should call it, for the players. That's going to back Northern Cambria up deep in their own territory and another third down. Big break for Berlin. And then that game last week, the Richland McCork game that we were doing, that they had at least a few penalties in the first half. There's a flag every play almost. That was a long game last week. This game moving right along, and that sets up nicely for me to, to be able to watch the pick game. They are unfortunately down 4 nothing, 14 nothing rather, but they're driving on Syracuse right now. Sounds good. <laughs> So third down and 13, minute 30 here on the clock in our game. Man in motion. Hogan gets the call. Draw! On a half a draw. Has some room to run. He's able to make a few guys miss. He's out to the 40 yard line. He's going to stay in bounds. Number 12, Blake Miller. Out the well, that's the second time we've seen the Northern Cambria delayed handoff. And it's working. Yeah, absolutely. That draw was really nicely First running. Man, Great blocking by the wide receiver. But again, folks, the ball spotted. The clock's about to start here. And Northern Cambria is still in the huddle. I really don't understand that. So we have a minute five left. Northern Cambria, they might just be content going in 7 nothing and just keeping the ball out of Berlin's hands. They're out of the shotgun. It's a run to Zacheski. Rather than Sukar, excuse me. Turn your ball! There's another one to play. Turn up. High ball, high ball, high out. Okay, the PA guy got everyone in the stands. It was actually a timeout. They were pointing to the timeout of Northern Cambria, not the ball in Berlin's favor. <laughs> the PA guy just said, my bad. I know everyone up here with us was just as shocked, so. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All both teams are out of timeout for the first half. Pull out the yellow 50 50 tickets. $416 for the winner. And you can pick that up here at the press box. Yellow tickets. 52 seconds here remaining. Northern using their last timeout. 932. Still five, haven't got one, past the 50 two. yard line and they have wasted over two minutes on the clock. 50, $416, yellow ticket. You know, it's kind of like, Nine, three, you know, two, sort of decide five, one, you before you, you start your drive if you want to just bring it in for the halftime or not. But obviously, that long uh, draw on third down may have changed coach's mind. Absolutely, but second down to four, 52 seconds left. Northern Cambria, they still have a long way to go to score. And we've seen neither team has had a big play. There's been a lot of thoughts for moving the ball down the field. So it's going to take maybe a, a broken tackle or two for Northern Cameron to get in the end zone. Or even, we haven't, a, we haven't had a chance to evaluate the kicking game. We don't really know what's going on here either. Yeah. Now here are coming for introduction. It's going to be a run. That's Sukar. He does not have a lot of room to run. 
And he's able to get a first down. Northern Cambria now in their hurry. Up mode. 44 seconds left. We're going to have to spot the ball and move the sticks. First down, Colts on the foul year 49. 44 seconds left. Looks like now Cambria's. It looks like they're signaling from the sideline. Hogan trying to get his receivers in order. So now the clock's going to roll again. We're at under 44 seconds here. They don't even have their quarterback really running. Now they're going to try a pass. Nearly intercepted. You have to wonder, is Hogan hurt or something? Because they have the running back running these plays right here. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. I couldn't tell if he was on the field there either. You know, it's such a, 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 a tall guy, you wonder if, you know, especially playing in the, in the Heritage or Westpac Conference, if you could use him sometimes a wide receiver. So it's second down and 10, the clock has finally stopped. The ball is inside of Berlin territory at the 49 yard line. So it's going to be a tall task to still get in the end zone. But as we saw on that, Berlin, or the the Wimber Blacklick Valley game, they scored with about four seconds left. Yeah, the unbelievable pass by Johnny Sheasley there with two seconds remaining in the half. So Hogan back in. Takes off the slant. He leaves it up in the air. Nearly intercepted. Two Berlin players in the area, not able to come down. That was just a long, high hanger there by the quarterback. Hogan. It looked like he was getting hurt there. I couldn't tell. I was looking at the uh, defensive backfield. I'm not sure if he got hit or not. There, but definitely what you would call the proverbial. Twenty-six seconds left. Third down and ten here for Northern Cambria. Hogan in at quarterback. It's a fumble. Berlin's going to get the ball back. You know, I keep saying it, and Jim, you're probably tired of hearing it, but I really don't understand what that drive was all about there by Cambria. Yeah, they, they, they didn't have a sense of urgency, then they did. They had, had some big runs. It was just kind of weird. But Berlin, obviously, with 20 seconds left, get a good chance here inside uh, Northern Cambria territory at about the 48 yard line. We're going to need some big passes here from Miller. And you see Glotfeldy here on the bottom half of your screen. I mean, you can expect them to try to find him. Miller finds Glotfeldy. He gets out of bounds. Wisely gets out of bounds, stops the clock here. First down to the Mountaineers. On the 34, 34 yard line, 15 seconds left. Only five seconds used on that play. So good, good time management here for Berlin right away. Absolutely. Coach Paul still there signaling. You have Blofeldy on the bottom half of your screen again. They're looking his way. Actually, no, they're going deep up top. He has him. Touchdown, Berlin. What a pass that by Blake Miller. Going up to the pile up. That's exactly where you want to play the ball. Touchdown, he's got to be my guy. He's just Luke Bonus. That number 86 there for Berlin. Luke Bonus, and what a bonus there for Berlin. Xavier able to score with under 10 seconds left to go in the half. Huge play. Second time this year on our broadcast. We'll see in a big play like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I thought Johnny Sheasley's uh, touchdown throw in that Wimber game was uh, the play of the year, but you know, that's just excellent field management, or time management by, by Coach Paul, and then throwing to the end zone as well. So, you know. Everyone hit the court with it, the, the cow pass to there, folks. You can see behind the net. There's absolutely nothing there to our left. Yellow 
So we're going to have a kickoff here with nine seconds to go, tie ball game just before halftime. And you saw Berlin, they were able to benefit from a fumble by Northern Cambria on a handoff, score two plays later to tie the game. And they're just going to do a little squib kick here. And with seven seconds left, I expect Northern Cambria to probably take a knee here, go into halftime tied. And they really should be up 7 nothing. turnover on in their own territory the late in the off. game. And again, you have to wonder what were they doing with the time management on that drive. On the recovery. Well, Jim, like you said, like you Seven said, yeah, they wanted to go fast and they didn't, and then they did. That's something that you have to, as a coach, decide right before the drive if you're going to go for it or not. Berlin here, obviously, defensive backs here playing back, but I don't think that uh, Hogan's going to risk it. it. Looks like he's going to kneel on it. And it will be a knee, and we're going to have a 7 7 score at half and so stay tuned folks we're going to leave the camera on you can check out the homecoming festivities the band's playing but we'll be back at 20 minutes for the exciting second half between northern cambria and berlin all tied up at seven so stay tuned Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2012 Marketing Pool Halftime Performance. The Marketing Pool is under the direction of Mr. Lance Sherwood, Color Guard Instructor, Mr. Jessica Boomer, and led on to the field by...